good evening. Thank you, my friends, for watching. Today, I wanted to take the opportunity not only to talk to you, but to also help you to help my friends at um, Food for the Poor. They're doing a very good job around the world, and I want all my listeners, if you could, okay, if you could give something and you want to help poor people around the world, don't forget, Food for the Poor, okay? Please help them. Give send some money. If you have money and you want to help, I would appreciate. Use them as your charity. Put them on Facebook for your birthday. Use Food for the Poor. They're doing a very, very good job. All right. Today I wanted to talk to people, you people, especially my people here in the United States, uh, about the election the role of the election and the role of a president and you as a voter, your role in this society. Okay? Number one, I want you to remember that the president, when you, this is, during the election, you are the boss. You have the power to elect or to hire a president. And this president is, is going to be your representative. He's not your boss. He's not the landlord. He got no power over you. You the one with the power. As the American people, we the people, it doesn't matter if it's in New Jersey or wherever you at. We the people, we are the power. The United States of America is for the people. The politicians, we actually elect them to represent us because this system is called a democratic, a re, uh, representative demo democracy. Okay? So, um, or you could call it a democracy. Most people, basically, it's not really a democracy. What it is, it's called a republic. In the word republic, in the word republic, you could find the word representative, represent the public, okay? So this is what you have. You go in, you're going to have an election, and you, the people who are in charge, going to select a person to run the country. You're not selecting a boss. He's not your boss. You're not going to select him because you're selecting him because he's a good manager, and don't select or oh, because he understand politics. He understand um, democracy. Um, not only politics, but he understand um, trade. Because this is a capitalist country. So you want a person who understand our capitalism work. Okay. You want to pick a candidate that understand foreign policy, diplomacy, and geopolitics. Because this country is the most powerful country in the world. They're just not a second one like that. China is doing their best to be like us. But they, they, they're not going to ever be like that because of the system that they have. Because uh, it's a dictatorship. <laughs> they don't have it like that. Okay, you cannot go in China or in Russia and start talking like I'm talking here. Like you see me, I'll be attacking Trump for being the ignorant president that he is every day, you can't do that. Or they would be coming here and pick me up. But here you have that power. You, you have the power to talk. you free. You have free press. The press could, could, could tell you every time the president lied to you, you see they come out and say, what he just said was a lie. This was a lie. Because, okay, everybody, this is the freedom that it's very hard to find another country like this around the world. Okay, I don't want to lose what, I, what I'm about to talk about because I outlined it. Okay, so we the people, first of all, we're going to talk about we the people. We're going to talk about election. Okay, your role in this society, the business role, minority, present, and opportunities. All right, I know you're not going to be able to remind me, but I had to remind myself. Okay, so... There's an election. You don't pick somebody because they look good. It's not important. Or because of their color. No. You're going to pick somebody because of their qualification. 
You're not going to pick somebody who's going to tell you who don't even understand the job description, the role of a president. Okay? And you have to take your time to see what, the way they act. Like the president we have now, he don't, he, I don't know, he, he don't even understand the, the job description of a president. Because Donald Trump, in his mind, think he's a dictator. And this is the last thing people in America want is a dictatorship. Problem with race. There's a problem with people not hiring black. There's a problem with black with the police and everything. But with all these problems, on election day, whoever you are, whether you black, Chinese, or whatever, you are the most powerful men in the world because your vote count. And that's why during the campaign, you see all these politicians start kissing your butt. Like, for instance, Trump was telling you that Mexican, they, they rapists, they all kind of name. All of a sudden now, he's telling you uh, Hispanic, they're good, they're this, because he need them. He realized now, now he's a power. He understand how powerful the people's votes are. So, and he realized he, he, he's so low because most Hispanic are not for him. Even though I don't go in the poll, he got, he, there's a lot of Hispanic who are for him. But the quantity that he wish he could have, he's not going to have it. Because he built his own campaign from the, in 2016 in the back of Mexican and different Hispanic and also immigrants. Even though the man is himself son of immigrants. But he wanted to let his... <laughs> this guy is confusing. And that's why, people, you, if you just have to make sure you fire him. Because this is what you're going to do. You go in, in an, you go in to elect a president. This is your job. This is the time where you have the power to f tell this man you fired. And I think many of us are going to do just that. Even though we we'll probably hear people telling you, I'm going to vote for him. I know a lot of them are saying that are not really. Once they go in there, they're not going to vote for him for real. Because they are not stupid. Okay? Like I was saying, this man, first of all, a president is a president for everybody. Because the president didn't put himself there. Remember, we the people, we hire him. We put him in the White House. Okay? So he's working for you. You are not working for him. President Trump don't see it that way. He think he's your father. He's your boss. He's a he's an authoritarian. He's a dictator. He you it's his way or the highway. Now on election day, you're gonna show him that it's your way or the highway for his butt. Okay? Because he you're not the boss. We are. Okay? Now this is the kind of president you want. You want you see, the job of a president of the United States is not very difficult. But as long as the person that is elected understand his role, just like even for me or for you, any citizen who understand his role as a citizen of this great country, you could do good. Because there's so many opportunities. Like me, my, my whole life, I never take, man, listen. If somebody... Nobody, I've never been a victim of discrimination. Because why? Because I always was an entrepreneur. Because even when I finished college, and I didn't really waste my time going and start looking for a job to work for anybody. Because even when I was in school, and as soon as I finished, I went to work, and as an entrepreneur, I was doing my own business. And I've always been that way. Even right now, I'm retired. I'm always, I'm on eBay. I'm making my videos. I'm making videos for people. I'm doing so many different things that, that I don't need a job from somebody. Because I'm always the guy who create my own job. And that's the good thing about this country. Because all I need is a desk and computers. And once I do that, then I'm free. And it should be like that for many people. The biggest problem is... Uh, some people, the way the system, 
And I think I see it with a lot of, like me, you find a guy from Jamaica or from Africa, or from another country, even the same with, with even Europeans. They come to this country and they understand the opportunities better than the people who were born here. And I could never understand that part. Because the key thing about the capitalist system is you have to be useful. That means you have to educate yourself. And believe me, there's a lot of things you could learn. Even right now, I'm always learning things on YouTube. On different, You could teach yourself different things. And once you are useful, and you, you, you could support yourself. Yes, you may need a job. Maybe you could, because right now, the kind of job that mostly that we need is probably all administrative, which means selling real estate, for instance. And that's the thing I wish. If we could elect a president, they're going to have to look at the black community, okay, in this country, and... I wish, and I think Biden probably going to be the best one for that. It's like, okay, not Wall Street, not those guys, but when you look at the, 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 the minorities, the disenfranchised, and you start thinking to elevate them, that means you could start even in the prison by making sure that those people that are in prison, they learn some kind of technical um they start with a technical career it could even be cooking it could they should do that and then even in, in our community those leaders instead of doing a whole lot of politics maybe they should really try to get the government and it probably be an opportunity if we elect biden okay because the democrats depend on the black vote so this time if we elect a black a, a democrat we should demand from them for them to help in the black community okay that means <laughs> the notion that people think white people should be able to get all the jobs that's bs we could sell real estate we could give mortgages we could have our own banks we could give our own loan, so we don't have to go to another community who's going to turn you down because they're trying to help their own people. So what we're smart enough to do that, and we have enough black people should really, even those who are, who are in business who in entertainment or different thing, there should be a way. And I thought about that so many times. Because when I see, like, the protests about uh, police uh, violence and all of that, okay, these people don't have respect for us, black, because we are not taking the advantage that are available to us. And we're going to have to revolt economically. Meaning that, okay, just like they're telling you the percentage of black people who own houses is very low. Okay. Because why? They're not getting mortgages from banks. Okay. So then the black people who have money should actually get together and then invest in the black community. And with the help of, let's say, if we elect a democratic government, they should actually help us do that so we could bring factories because there's so many entrepreneurs building different things maybe we, we should have uh let's say the small business administration even with the government help not only helping you helping people as entrepreneur this time because that's exactly what happened in this country in different other communities we need that Okay, with the health system, train people, training and training and more training so people could get jobs in hospital and in hospices and different places. And, and let's expand it. Okay, and those companies that are in Wall Street that are getting all those tax breaks. 
okay, I'm not going to tell you to put a gun to their head. Because remember, I'm a Republican. And I, I have a lot of respect for business. Or for capitalists. So, what I'm asking is, they need to kind of, um, maybe the government or maybe the administration should really think of a way to make them, because listen man, the notion that most of the black, most black people that I know could do exactly just as well as anybody else. I don't care if it's in Wall Street and finance or anything else, because those things are just basic. Finance is not that difficult. Because basically you just want to, okay, if you're going to loan somebody money, you want to see if they have equity. And then, okay, if they qualify, then you do. Then, you, okay, it's no big, it's not sending somebody to the moon or maybe rocket science. Okay? And many black people and many black in the black community could do it. So the whole thing is they're just going to have to elect a president or to have an administration who's going to have to be looking out for everybody. The problem we have with the guy we have now, he's confused. The guy is ignorant and he's confused. It's all about himself. I'm better than you. I'm not going to help New York because New York is run by a Democrat. In New York City, a uh, mayor is a Democrat. This is not his job description. But he don't know it because he never read his job description. He think he could do that. And people just sitting there looking at him. It's just like, for instance, right now, we people start voting already. There's a Supreme Court judge who's dead. Okay? It's obvious now is not the time to for him. So he's fighting about putting his own judge another for him to get vote. So all of a sudden now, the guy who hit Hispanic, who always took, now he, he's promising a, a, a Hispanic judge. And if he feel that that's going to work for him, he probably going to do it. But he's not going to do it because the person is qualified. It's, he's only going to do it because a lot of Hispanic would vote for him if he put a Hispanic job, judge. <laughs> This is not the person you want to elect next election, my friend. You don't want somebody like that. This is no good. Okay? So when you select a president, the president is working for you. Okay? The president is looking out for you, for everything that is good for you, equally. Not because you're Democrat or because you're Republican. Barack Obama, Barack Obama did two terms. And the majority of the people who voted for him, they were white. And he never, and he never was like, okay, I'm going to do this for all the black. I'm gonna. No, he was the president of the United States. Any color, any um, persu persuasion or any, any party, it doesn't matter. And this is what we need. We need a president who's going to be the president of the United States. Not the president of the KKK or white supremacists. Or he's going to tell you oh, uh, <laughs> the Confederacy who lost. It's like this president is so ignorant. He's, he's supporting the Confederacy who went to war with the United States of America against slavery because it's like the abolishment of slavery caused a bunch of southern state to detach themselves from the United States of America because their business depended on slavery it wasn't caterpillar and they didn't buy uh, tractors they wanted labor from black people and as soon as the northern states uh, go against it, they say, okay, you know what? We're just going to build another country away from that. So they have that Confederate flag, and this is them. But Trump, who always live in the North, the guy is from New York, he don't even understand what the Confederacy, he don't understand it. That's why I call him an ignorant president. So now, but the only thing he knows about it is black people don't like them, and they don't like black people. So 
As soon as, and that's all he need. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. And now guess what? He's going to lose this election because he was so dumb. He could have a second term. He's not going to have it. And I don't even know need no poll to tell me. Because even the first election, he had lost that with the popular vote. Three million votes short. So the one coming, I know it's going to be more than that. And he knows that so much. That's why he's rushing this judge. He would have put a judge. I mean, the lady, <laughs> Judge Ginsburg died. And five minutes later, after they put the, it out there and it was on the news, Trump was already talking about her replacement. <laughs> Where's the respect? The lady is a Jew, and this is in the middle of a Jewish holiday. I mean, this is a slap in the face of Jews around the world, what he did. And him and the Republicans, followers of his, now they already say, oh, we're going to have to come up with a replacement this weekend. Meanwhile, people are actually in the middle of voting, at, of choosing a new president. But if Trump <laughs> was confident that he was going to be reelected, he wouldn't be talking like that. He got the memo that this is it. He's out. No doubt. And that's why he want to do it this weekend. He's trying now to get the Hispanic vote. Uh, he figured he's going to get a Floridian. He's, he, he's, he's talking about, I'm going to put a woman. My friend, this is not how you do that. You don't pick a Supreme Court justice out of a hat. Because they're going to be there for life. And just because they're Republican, that doesn't mean they're conservative. And obviously, you already put two already. And a couple of, they already proven that they're not walking with you. And I even see him tweeting about, what's wrong with the Supreme Court? Because he thought those people were supposed to vote, agree with everything he said. It's like just like he said, okay, I could pull out a 45, walk down Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody in the head. And I could get away with it because I have three judges in the Supreme Court. But the reality is, Donald, if you go and you do that, those people that you put in the court, they're going to condemn you because they have their own credibility. They went to school for this and they taught them how to do it. And they know their job description. They're not stupid like you who never read your job description. Because as if you understand your job, you supposed to be the president of everybody, not just the Republicans, not just those 30 percent who's following you around, who always been with you. And that's why this 30 percent, even though they're saying they're supporting you, believe me, you're going to be so surprised to see it's not 30 percent. You're going to be shocked. To see, it was about 20%. Because many of them either not going to vote for you or may not even go to vote. And you know that. Because that's why you're trying to, to, to mess with the post office. You already, you got that memo already. So I don't, I don't really have to explain it to you. Because you know that already. Because otherwise you wouldn't be doing all these crazy things. Now I see you come up with, <laughs> that old Trump got an executive order. Uh, he said, he's talking about power he don't even have. Uh, I'm going to put an executive order saying that uh, Biden cannot be elected because he's on drug. Now, you probably think I'm lying. Google it. I'll show it to you. I have it on my Facebook page. Go check it out. Power, he don't have that kind of power. Now, you see the thing with Tic Tac? You know I'm in the stock market big time. So this whole thing with Tic Tac, because the stock market been doing so bad. You see, you don't hear Trump talk about it. Ever since a couple of, it's been like two weeks. Ever since he put his finger in this Tic Tac thing. <laughs> Believe me, the stock market been doing so bad. You wouldn't know it. Because he's not saying a word about it. You could check it out. This morning, it was like down 500 points. And now his friend is about to buy TikTok. He just pushed Microsoft. 
What is he doing? And now he want them to give the government $5 billion. It's all talk. He don't have the power. It's all confusing to business, to PhDs everywhere. But he's saying it because he's the guy who say anything he feel like it. He just talks shit. Word up. I'm sorry, but that's what he does. He's a shit talker. I don't want to miss what I want to talk about. Remember your role. Those people who don't vote, if you don't vote, you're going to elect the wrong president. You have to vote. You either gonna mail in your vote, or if you have to go there and stand there because it's not gonna be five days, it's just for that one day. Get your ass on that line and vote. Because this men have to go. It's, if, it's three o'clock. If Trump if Trump is elected for another term, you think he's bad right now? This is the time where Trump is not gonna have anything to lose. He's gonna do what he wants. Because Trump is shameless. The man is shameless. And you could see it for all the desperate thing. Here you are. If you understand democracy, you elect somebody to protect democracy. Now, this man is telling the people that voting by mail is going to be fraudulent. If he is not elected, that means somebody stole the election. Then he already tell you that even if he lose the election, he may not, he may take it to court and do a whole lot of up and down. Because what happened is, once he's no longer president, we're gonna know how much his net worth is. And uh, I know they already say it's around 600 million because he lost so much being that he's in the White House. He was supposed to make so much, but he'd been such a bad president that his business, his, he was a failure with six bankruptcies. Now he left his business in the hand of his son. That's even worse. <laughs> They're worse than he is. So, Right now, this man is so desperate, but he fell the presidency. You know what get on my nerve with the Supreme Court situation? The whole thing, we have like almost two months before the election. It's about 40 something days. Uh, Trump wanna change the narrative. The na we should be talking about, we up to 200,000 American dead with the COVID-19 and people, we're gonna have to remember that if we vote. And this is the man who was going after Obamacare and he promised he was gonna give you the Trump care that he never was able to do. And I saw him a couple of weeks ago on TV, on ABC News talking about, oh, this time mine is gonna be the best. I'm gonna come with a vaccine. I'm gonna make the weather better. Everything is gonna be good if you give me another four years. And I'm looking at him and I'm saying, man, the only thing you could get from me is my foot up your butt. And it would be so deep, you would need 10 doctors to remove it. Cause that's what I wanna do to this man. I want him out of the people's house. The White House. Because he think this is one of his hotel. He think he's our boss. We the boss. And how I'm going to put my foot up his ass? By voting. And if you don't vote, he's going to put his foot up your ass. Word up. Because another four years of Trump, 200,000 people die of COVID already. Now imagine what's going to happen. This is, let me tell you something. When I say 200,000 people die of COVID, some of those people dead directly from Trump negligence. You see when he go to those airport and he's showing all these people standing there, he telling people not to wear masks. But meanwhile, he did an interview and he's telling... <laughs> play it down. I still like playing it down. Yes, sir. Because I don't want to create a panic. 
you just breathe the air. That's how it's uh, passed. Uh, it's also more deadly than your, you know. And I'm sure many of you saw it, where he's saying that, listen, this is deadly. You see what happened to Herman Cain. This, and I'm sure I live here in New Jersey, and there was a headline that people were giving a pool party. And there were no social distancing, no masks. And they, the police went in there and arrested everybody. But Trump would have like 400 people or five or maybe a couple of thousand people together in an airport hangar without the masks. No social distancing. But he's getting away with it. And many of them end up dead. But you don't know about it. Because if Edmund Cain wasn't somebody famous, most of us would not know about that. And he, I'll show you a tweet where he said, not to wear masks. People are tired of wearing masks. We want our freedom. This is directly related to Trump. And the more of those rallies he has, the more people who's going to die because of him. And you see Biden, how responsible he is, the way he's conducting his thing, and the, that's why he's raising more money and more people are going with him. And I'm the guy who listened to CNBC because I'm the stock market guy, remember? And believe me, the more of the CEOs now, Everybody is like Biden is the way to go. Because the thing is, the smart people of this country realize if Trump stay in the White House, what's going to happen is the virus is going to be with us for the next four years. Because we have the capability to have the, four, the, the, the government should have taken this thing like a war. It's like what we did in World War II. He has the power to force the Ford Motor Company, GE, Boeing, all these companies, not only to make masks for everybody, free masks, if he was a responsible president. And these companies would have done it. Because it would have been an... Ad Listen, you imagine if they were... This is not... And I'm no president. <laughs> I'm no intellectual. This is just another bozo talking here. I'm just a regular guy. But let me tell you, if the government told all the companies to give people free masks, they would do it. You know why? Because it would be advertisement for them. They would put their logo in them, and they could even advertise their product on them. So it's not like they wouldn't be willing to do it. They, it even Let me tell you, even the respirators that you was... You, Many companies like Tesla and different, they all were standing there ready to do it. But Trump put himself in a corner when he said that COVID was a hoax. So there is no way he could do that because he had already said that. And that's why he never wear a mask because he put himself into a corner because the whole thing, it's all about him. The conspiracy theories and all his stupidness I mean, this president, man, got to go. This man should have been there for two minutes. He should have been revoked. And this Congress, the Republican, and I'm a Republican, I'm going to vote against them. They have to go too. And history, one day, will judge them. And Trump, they're gonna be, it's going to be a, the joke of history. Because everybody's going to be talking about this. Those four years of Donald Trump. They're not going to be eight years. Four years. Make America great again. But guess what? His Confederate flag. <laughs> you see the thing with that? Let me tell you. Germany. The Third Reich. Hitler. They lost. And Germany buried them. You don't hear them talk about them or supporting them. But basically, that's what he's doing. When you see him supporting the Confederate flag, the military want to remove the name of these Confederate generals on top of those military base. He don't want it. 
he criticized uh, NASCAR for eliminate for for eliminating the because those people know that this flag is the flag of the people who supported slavery, and that's what I don't understand. Black people who support Trump because you supporting the Confederacy, which is otherwise Trump. The only way a black a black person is a good person to Trump is if you were in the plantation in the South somewhere. Even though he never lived in the South, he's not a Southerner. <laughs> the guy is a New Yorker. So if, if, okay, during the Civil War, Trump would have been in New York. Not in Alabama, not in Virginia, but he don't know about that. But he's telling you, that's my heritage. And even those people, they're looking at him like, I couldn't be your heritage. Your daughter is married to a Jew. That killed Kushner. But you supporting uh, the <laughs> white supremacists? And you saying Israel is your friend? I mean, the guy got it all flipped out, man. This guy is totally upside down. And the people who support him, some of them I understand. Okay, some people say I do it because I'm a Republican. But I'm a Republican. I've always been a Republican. I've been a Republican when Trump was a Democrat, I was a Republican. When Rush Limbaugh didn't vote, I had already been a Republican. And there's no way I would vote for Trump. Because being a Republican don't make me a cult member. It doesn't make me a guy that's going to follow Trump because Trump is a disaster. And right now, you see the thing with the Supreme Court? Let me say this to you. I don't think it's going to do anything because these people, whoever he put in the court, he don't even know anything about them. As a matter of fact, that lady, uh, the Cuban judge that he he's supposed to be putting I even saw him saying, I don't know her, <laughs> but I would put her because, because of her, I'm going to get the Cuban votes. This is not our, you, this is, okay, this is, you kill. Oh. Now, he's already telling you the truth, even though the guy is a big liar, but he's so dumb, he's telling you why he's doing it. It's not because she's a good jurist. It's not because she know the law. He know nothing about her, but she, I know one thing. If I put her, I'm going to get all the women and I'm going to get all the Cubans and I want to win Florida. I'm going to get the Hispanic vote. Now, that alone should have been the disqualifier for me. Even if I was supporting somebody and that's the reason you're going to put somebody on a, in the Supreme Court for life because that person for, for, for going to get you more votes. People are already voting. We are already in the middle of the election. <laughs> so that, that's what make it, you see this whole thing? I wish when, if one thing I should, Biden should do, as soon as he become president, just do exactly what Trump would do, come up with an executive order to say, okay, now we're gonna select a new judge. And if there's any problem with that, then I'm gonna put one more judge to buy, to, for the balance of power. Because Obama was supposed to put somebody, the idiot, McConnell, the, the Republican idiots blocked it. So now Trump is gonna put three judges. But I believe in the justice system in the United States. Because I don't care even if he had four judges. If he did anything that is not right, those same judges gonna lock his ass up. That's how it is. So I don't have a problem with that. My problem is uh, with Trump is this is a violation of the this is this is abuse of the Constitution. You cannot be putting a judge right in the middle of an election. Wait for the election to be over, and the person who is elected could do it. And that's what they did to Obama. And that's what they should do. And whatever it takes, the Democrats should... <laughs> but anyway, because 
there's another part to that, is that if Trump put a whole lot of conservative in the court, providing that they are conservative, because they could say they are, and then after that, you realize they are not. So, they like Roe versus Way, um, Brown versus the Board of Education. These are laws that a conservative court, if it's not balanced, could get rid of them. So you could have busing, you could have separation of black and white, you could have all these different things. And this is Trump. <laughs> if, if, because Trump is telling you black people is moving to the suburb, he's scaring white people of black people. Meanwhile, black people, white people in this country are doing their gentrification. They're moving to the black neighborhoods. So that's how detached Trump is to the people of America. So he's telling you uh, this is a black city, this is a Democrat city, uh, ignorant. And that's why I believe in the American people. That's the smartest people in the world. I mean, look, the country who make the iPhone, the country who come up, the majority the, put the first man on the moon. This country, there is nothing like it. We're going to an experiment with Trump. This is our little mistake, and this is going to be a lesson. It's probably a little costly. It's just like you learn from your mistake, and you, we know in the future you don't pick somebody like Trump. Okay, he should have been showing his income tax. You don't wait till after he's dead. Now you know that the man been in bankruptcy six times. Okay, now you know the guy. Trump got so much sexual. Now you see Bill Cosby is in jail. All the women that accuse Trump of sexual misconduct could not fit in a minivan. It's about 25. You couldn't fit them in a minivan. Okay? You would need a coach. You couldn't fit them in a minivan. Now, if you think I'm lying, Google it. Because one thing about Google, talk to your phone. Alright? So, this is what you end up with. And some people thought he's such a good businessman. Uh, I'm going to bring all the jobs from China. China didn't take no job from us. <laughs> the relationship we have with China, we need China. And China need us. Okay, because we have a lot to sell. And they have a lot of consumers for it. Okay. The biggest problem we have with China is intellectual property. Because we do people, businesses here. But what did Trump do for intellectual property? He didn't even... He took a big talk. Told me the case where Trump did or even talk to the Chinese about intellectual property. So if you're going to tell me, oh yeah, Trump did... did what, what, show, me, show me where he did something about it. Because he don't even know where to begin. He don't even understand intellectual property. And it's not something, even in China, is not the only one. When it comes to foreign policy, diplomacy, and geopolitics, we should put our foot up Trump's ass and send him home and tell him, you fired. The Russian put bounties on American soldiers. Up till now, Trump never say a word about it. Every time somebody says something about the Russian, Trump defend them. You know, this is something people like Ronald Reagan and other, or William F. Buckley, the real conservatives. Now, if those people were alive, to see Trump in bed with Vladimir Putin the way he is, or kissing the shoes of Lilo Kim of North Korea, those people would probably commit suicide. Things God did not around. And you're going to tell me Rush Limbaugh 
or all these idiots, all these talking heads in Fox News, why are they so silent? Because I could hear a pen drop on Vladimir Putin. Vladimir Putin is a bad guy. He's against America. Recently in Syria, the Russian military came and hit American car, uh, American soldiers' vehicle. Okay? If, if I was the president, I would tell them, next time any of them come close, start shooting. And blow them, blow it up. Same thing, there was an aircraft, airplane. Russian came very close to an American Air Force plane. And they caused the plane to shake. They, I mean, it was so close. You, they could actually see the guy. They even took pictures of it. Did you hear Trump talk about that? Because I'm sure Vladimir Putin got pictures of him naked with women. Because he's he was a womanizer during all these um, pageants. Uh, those beauty pageant that he had in Russia, okay? And those guys, they film everything. They have something on him. And I didn't, I'm not the only one who's saying it. Even the guy who was a head of intelligence of the United States is saying it. And Stevie Wonder could see it. It's not something that, okay, you want to put this guy here? So another term, what is going to be his relationship with Vladimir? Is Vladimir going to have an office in the Oval Office too? Or a desk? Because he's afraid of him. Now, when this is the power that you have. Now, you wanted to know why you should let him go? The Russian. They, they're meddling in the election. They have these people on Facebook who's sending all these pictures about Biden. Uh, they're going after people's mail. They try to hack. The FBI uh, already been out there saying it. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, they're hacking on American people's computers. They're looking for the campaign so they could come out with, with email, just like they did to Hillary Clinton. You see Trump say anything about that? Trump is sitting on their data about the COVID virus. Okay, now he don't want them to report how many people have the virus. The CDC, even the guy who's the head of the CDC, he went in front of Congress and said that everybody should be wearing a mask. Trump called him and said, why you say that people, a mask is better than the vaccine? Because the vaccine that Trump is talking about is all la la land, it's all out air. Because the companies, because I'm in Wall Street, I do my little Wall Street thing here. You're not going to bullshit me. Okay, I could give you all the name of the companies who's working on, on, on a vaccine. And every single one of them, they're all down right now anyway. They're not ready. But Trump is telling everybody, we're going to have a virus right before the election. <laughs> and he said anything, he feel like it. And the people in those companies saying, calling each other. You, you, you know what he's talking about? No. Ah, come on, you know the guy's a liar, man. He's just lying. That's all. And everybody got used to it. But I want to see. But the American people are not deaf. Mute. They're able to see. And they're watching you, Dino. And you're going to be surprised. They're not as stupid as you think. The notion that you're good for business is so ridiculous. Because right now, the problem you have with China is not good for business. <laughs> this, this iPhone that no one who just came out came from China. During your presidency, Tesla just built a mega factory in China. Not only we import from China and we have, and they are the source. That's where everything is built. Even if somebody came out with a virus, we don't even have the capability to manufacture the vaccine. If somebody come out with a vaccine, we couldn't manufacture it here. It would have to be manufactured in China. We sell food, the, the, the farmers, they export 
agricultural product to China. They need China. As soon as you start messing with China, the farm is, you promised them you was going to give that. You was going to give this. You was going to give them a stimulus package. Where is it? You too busy giving tax break to the very rich, to the first, to the top 1%. I don't have a problem with that. But at the same time, many people right now cannot pay their rent. The Democrats went to you and they say, okay, $600 a month. Oh, no, that's too much. Uh, because if we give them 600 a month, they're not going to go back to work. Okay, let's bring it down to 300. Let's make it 500. Where is that stimulus? And now this, a whole month went by. People are not paying their rent. Uh, they're not able to buy the medicine. And this is the voters. These are the people who hire you. This is the people you were supposed to work for. This is your boss we're talking about. Now, you imagine if you hire somebody, I mean, this you're talking about dereliction of duty. The man who can't pay his rent, the guy who owns a building who cannot pay his mortgage, okay? His checks are bouncing all left and right. He's paying $35, all of this. And you expect those people to vote for you because you're gonna put a Cuban judge <laughs> in the Supreme Court? People are not even thinking about that. People are looking at what you're doing to them. And that's why you're not going to be reelected. Because you're doing it to yourself. Because you're not looking out for the people. They, they can't pay that rent, you know. And if you've never been to a mall, where I live here, there's a bunch of malls. You should see how many businesses are closed, out of business. They'll never come back. Restaurant, out of business. They'll never come back. Everybody was waiting for that $1,200 for the federal government. This was a, would have stimulated the economy. And you would have, uh, this, people would go and go shopping. But you're not even thinking about that. You wanted to make peace between Kuwait, between Israel and the United Arab Emirates. <laughs> That's what's important to you right now. Because you want a Nobel Peace Prize. You're talking about, you give somebody a job, he's supposed to make your life better, but he's so busy helping himself. He's not thinking about you. He won a Nobel Prize because Obama had a Nobel Prize. Kushner, go over there to Israel. Tell, tell uh, Bibi to start talking with uh, Mohammed over there in um, United Arab Emirates and see if we could do a peace process. I don't care after that. Once I get my Nobel Prize, they could start fighting again. But for now, do me a favor, stop. Saudi Arabia, I want you to start to, to be friends with Israel temporarily. Let Help me get my Nobel Prize. He's calling everybody. This is what he's doing right now. He's not thinking about you not paying your rent and you're going to reelect him. He, that's what he's on the phone doing when he's not tweeting or he's not playing golf. The job that you hire him to do, he's not doing it. Donald Trump is not talk, thinking about you. And believe me, if he's reelected, then you could really forget about it. Because <laughs> at this point, he don't, he's done. But I know American people are smart. He's going to get his Nobel Prize. And if those people with Nobel Prize give Trump a Nobel Prize, they need to be freaking locked up somewhere in the hospital. Because there's nothing peaceful about this man. You have riots in the street of America. 200,000 people dead. 6 million infected. More than 6 million people infected. But he's telling you the virus is something created by the Democrats. It's in the cloud. It doesn't exist. 
Meanwhile, you have people in your family who's dead. You have friends on my Facebook page. You know how many people? You know how many of my nieces and cousins who had the virus? But one thing about my Haitian people, they got those medicine, those natural medicine that they take, those tea, they work. Word up. Because my niece, she was born here. She told me, Uncle, let me tell you something. I've been taking those Haitian medicine, those tea, those uh, aloe and this and that, and they work. And that's why a lot of them are not dead, thanks God. But if it was for Trump, they would have been gone. Just like M and Kane, they would have been done. Okay? So, we need to elect a president who's going to give us black people in America opportunities. We smart. We need a president who's going to talk to those guys in Wall Street. The designers of cars. Those guys who's making those uh, 3D printers. Those guys like HP. All the Fortune 500 to start opening the doors, not only for black folks that are qualified in, in the area of finance, design, and engineering, but also kids in school, training programs, scholarship. Because the private sector need to help. Because if things, let me tell you, if black people in America is doing good, the whole country is going to do even 10 times better. We just need you guys to look at us and to help us. And you're going to have to, and we, Biden, I hope you're listening, man. Once you in that White House, you need to sit down. And a lot of them, you take a guy like Buffett. Because I, I listen to CNBC all day long. That's what I, the only I'm doing now talking to you. And most of the CEOs... I mean, they all ready to open doors. We just need the government to really, let's see how we could work it out. Entrepreneurship. We need to help minority businesses. Give them government contract. Let's do, let's start doing it. You know, believe it or not, Reagan was, was doing, did a lot of that stuff back in the, in the, in the eighties. And I think Biden should do that because the black community should not be for this time. We need the administration to help us break those barriers. Okay. We need to open doors for black people or for minorities. Them, you know, open doors for them. We could sell real estate. <laughs> we could build stuff. We could build robots. We could build solar, <coughs> solar cells, solar, um, any, anything that anybody else could do. The thing is now we just have to start bringing them into the black community. Help businesses, restaurant. We need your support. And we hope this administration that is coming up could do that. I want to. I, I wrote a paper about the way things should. One day I'll, I'll do a whole thing about ah, uh, you could bring economic development to black neighborhood, black cities, and now is the time because if things get good for the black minority in this country, believe me, the whole country is gonna be ten times better than it is right now. Remember that. And you could also do the same thing in those prison. Make sure that you could teach people who was in prison. Teach them a trade. So when they come out, they don't have to sit home and not doing anything. Okay? They could have a trade. It could be auto mechanic. It could be electronic because everything now is electronic. You, we could build a brand new world after COVID. And this is going to be America 2.0. That means black people is going to be up there. All the barriers, all the doors that are closed, all these police brutality, all those things. Once black people are successful, you're not going to have them. 
it's not going to happen anymore. Because people are going to respect us. And somebody's going to have to open the doors for us. Me personally, I'm good. I'm good. I could help. I could give ideas. Okay? Because there's a lot of things that could be done in, 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 in minority communities. Okay? We could, we could do banks. We could do IPOs. We could come up with new companies. Defense contract. We could do all that. We could build robots. Who's gonna take jobs? That's what people think. But somebody have to build them. <laughs> we could do that. Okay? We could do, because America, what happened here is, we are in what you call a post-industrial era. In the era that we are right now, oh my God, I'm making this thing even longer. But I just wanna share this real quick. The, they were, like, during the, the, the industrial era, People used to think that uh, when they come out with washing machine, uh, refrigerators, uh, washing machine, and people used to think that those things, they're going to replace the housewife. Because the housewife not going to have nothing to do. Because uh, instead of them washing dishes, the machine going to do it. Okay, instead of them um, doing this and that, the machine going to do it. But guess what? When the machine did it, those people, the machine actually ended up liberating them. Because instead of having a housewife who's sitting in the house all day washing clothes and doing all that, now, because of those technology, they were able to leave the house, go to work outside, and they, they went to get a degree in college. Okay, they're the one who now CEOs. And they're the people now who's working in finance and who's doing all these good jobs and who's making all these big money. So instead of, it, it was a good thing. And I think America need to start thinking that way for black people. That means you're not going to have no more riots if all these people were working and they had a good job, or they could work at home. America 2.0, you don't have to go to work. Like me, I'm sitting here in front of my desk, and I could do, I'm doing, I'm making website. I got a guy paying me 500 bucks. Will, make me a website. Okay, I don't have to go anywhere. I'm going to do it. It's going to be on the internet. Will, listen, I want to buy a MacBook Pro on Facebook, or I mean on, on YouTube. This is ready to be shipped. Okay? Will, in, but that's me. That's why I'm saying, look, I don't have a problem because I understand the system. I wish I could share this knowledge with a lot of people because there's so much, so many people could do even now during the COVID. Uh, you could do at home and that could bring you money. Because even this video I'm making here, it's going to be on YouTube. It's going to have commercial in it. People are going to watch it. I'm going to get some money out of YouTube. Okay? So when we talk about America 2.0, okay, forget about drug dealers or people doing illegal stuff or breaking banks and stuff like that. But there's enough legitimate things that you could do here that could make you successful where you don't have to give somebody a bad $20 bill, where they're going to call the cops on you or, or something like that. And this is the kind of things that are the leadership the administration, along with the black leadership, they need to work on. Because we, the people of America, especially the black people, which I am one of them, we just as smart as anybody else. There's nothing somebody else could do, or the Indian, or the Chinese, or anybody else could do that we can't do. The only thing is, they're not opening the door and letting us in. Because, my friend, I many times, me personally, I know, I many times I had, once I was able to force the door open and I was in, and I fit it and I did my thing. And that's why today I'm retired. Okay? And I know there's tons of people like that. I have my nieces, I have people, neighbors, people in the community, in the black community that are smart. All they need to do is open the door for them. Give them a chance. Okay, give them a chance. If you could do that, America, 
Wall Street, the industrial uh, street or Silicon Valley or please stop the nonsense open the door for blacks that's what I'm gonna ask you man because if you could do that you could make an America that is so good without all this prejudice because if if more people it, I mean are you there's people in this country. They go to while the guy is sleeping, he's making a million dollars an hour. Some make the twenty million. Like one Buffett, I think he make what ten million. Every, like as soon as he go to sleep, money, he's he's making money. You want to tell me they, those people? They somebody gonna have to convince them. Somebody to, gonna have to sit down and woo. and I could look. I'll participate if I have to. To write a white paper on what do we need to keep the bl it's only 12 percent black people it's not like what 12 percent of the population but we need more opportunities people open the door for the black people you're gonna have to do that i don't care if you have to create new business or whatever it is because the, the more you could do and we could work, we could. there's a lot we could do. You cannot keep the door closed. And every time when I'm seeing that, and, and I know that's the problem. Okay? Because there's a lot of young people. There's a lot of people in the black community. If all they need is a job. Okay? All they need is a job. And there's enough talent out there. In, in, in research and development, in medicine, in so many different industries, 5Gs, okay, a lot of those things that are being built outside, let's try to think of a way to, let's do them here, perhaps. Okay, so if, let's, I don't know, please, America 2.0, Black inclusion. And I'm talking directly to white America. To those with the money. Those who's getting those tax breaks. I don't have a problem with you getting your tax break. But my problem right now is I want you to open the doors. I want you to invest. I want you to help make the black community, the black people in America better. So we don't have riots. We don't have police brutality. We don't have all these problems. And I'm begging you. Oh, I hope I cover everything. Minority, prison, opportunities. Our role. Our role in that society. I don't care what color you are, brother. This election, you want to get rid of Trump. Trump is no good. Even if you like him. Maybe you like the look, you like that wig he's wearing, you like that blue suit he's always wearing, and that red tie. Okay, good. I don't have no problem with that. But he's not a qualified president. Okay? America 2.0 that we need, we need a better man in the White House. Not him. He's a failure. If he did six bankruptcies, and he failed you, 200,000 people dead. Because of him and his manage, mismanagement. He didn't want you to know how bad the virus is. And he still don't want you to know. Even though you heard him on tape explaining to somebody how bad it is. Okay? So if you don't think he's bad, then you have a problem. Maybe you should see a doctor. Because I don't have a problem. I have good common sense. Okay, listen to me. Écoutez-moi. Azenda May. This man got to go. Your role as a citizen, we the people, you have the power to kick him out. Tell him you fired. Word up. He got to go. He's bad for you. Mexico was going to pay for the wall. Remember that? Mexico tell him to go suck an egg. 
because they ain't paying for it. So he turn around and make you pay for it or try to get you to pay for it. But guess what? His wall is more important than you not paying your rent this month or not paying your mortgage. Because what, what is he doing for you? Today is what, the 28th or the whatever it is? Because me, I don't work. I don't, I don't know what date it is. I know it's three. Okay. Alexa, what is today's date? It's Monday, September 21st. Okay. And you still didn't pay that rent. <laughs> you still didn't pay that mortgage. And it probably the third month already. Or the third time. Or maybe some people the fifth time. Policy was going to give you that 600 Trump said no. And you, now all of a sudden, they don't, they're not even talking about it. You were supposed to get that 1200 Even though Trump was going to tell you, I send you. He was going to write his name on it. He's going to make you think that he gave it to you. But in reality, it's your own money. But you're not getting it. 